Hi guys, it's me Karen from Karen's Intuitive Jewelry. Hope you all are doing well. I'm finally whew, recovered from my dental um, appointment yesterday and the, the prep work, the first part of it, which is the hardest part, went really well. I love this new dentist. I have a huge phobia, dental phobia, and um, she's really helped me a lot. What really kicked my butt was um, the medication that they prescribe, which I'm grateful for because it's part of helping me get over the phobia, is like a, the generic name for Halcyon. And you only take it like the night before and then an hour before your procedure. And honestly, the night before when I took it, I thought, hmm, this isn't working because uh, I had a hard time getting asleep and I really was a little worried. <laughs> but then I took the one an hour before the appointment and it was okay. I started feeling it for sure then. But last night, man, I was really, really out of it. I mean, out of it. I could have probably gone to bed about eight o'clock, which I should have, but I didn't want to wake up at four in the morning. Um, so I stayed up till my normal time and went to bed and had weird dreams, which I guess is kind of normal. Anyway, feeling much better, more like myself today to where I think I can get started with this project. I wanna say thanks to everybody who uh, offered up their opinions and Patina won out. Um, and so here's the final project with Patina on it. And I have to say, I love it. Turned out really, really cute. And um, so thank you. I have not yet replied to all of you, which hopefully later today I'll get around to doing that. Um, so yeah, I think it turned out really cute. And here are the other stones I've picked to make some more. I'm gonna make a pumpkin patch and try different things with it. Um, I doubt I'll get to all of them, but I'm sure a few of them I'll get done. And then I wanna do a couple wire wrap pumpkins, but that's pretty ambitious. I always think that way and don't actually get around to doing it. Though I have to admit to myself even, I do create a lot more than a lot of people I see. So pat on the back for me. Um, anyway, we'll get started. And here are the four that I chose. A labradorite, a sunstone, a goldstone, and a skull site. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure the copper foil tape, um, cut it, and apply it, and I'll be back. Wash your hands and wash your stones with alcohol. And so you can see I chose four and um, I kind of do everything all at the same time. So I got these cut and initially wrapped. I haven't burnished anything down yet, but always kind of thinking about different designs. This one, I think I'm gonna use one of the pinking shears, this little scalloped edge for just a little something different. And we'll see how that turns out. So I'm going to just cut the edge off. It doesn't need to be real deep edge. Meaning I just wanna do which can be a little tricky, but. Just go with it, right? 
And I know I talked uh, previously about how I kind of cut little uh, slits in some of these when they're sharp points and whatnot. But I even also do it with ovals because there's going to be quite a lot of overlapping. So what I have found, cut down on it, and it's just a little, and it's not imperative that you do it, but I'll usually do the sides first and then slit the ends and then I'll even take a, one of these little cuticle scissors and just cut like the edge off like a like a triangle edge off of them so they fold over a little nicer so like this one, there won't be as much to fold, see? And then this one, same thing. Just cut the little tip, like a little triangle off here. Let's see if I can get it on my finger. See, it's just the, like the little tip of it. So that when you do fold it over, it's just not as bulky. And then of course we'll trim all this. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All right, just stick it in, pull it up. And cut a little notch out. What's cool about these is they're even a little curved, so you can cut that tip off with a little curve. So it just cuts down on a lot of the wrinkles. And they do get covered up um, when you put the solder on, but you know, sometimes it can just be, look a little bulky or whatnot. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna continue with the burnishing and I'll be back. The other way you can cut these a little bit is kind of in the corner as well. And then it leaves a solid flap that you can put down and then fold over. It just makes uh, less folds. Just some little tips. Here we go, all taped and ready to be fluxed. I trim the backs. And heating up the iron, we'll clean the tip and flux the pieces on front and back with this Nova Can Old Masters Liquid Flux that cleans up with water. And then I usually add a little Dawn. I just put a, a little bit in here, not much at all. And I always start on the back whatever reason <laughs> I think just it helps me kind of get things going gives the iron a chance to heat up and whatnot
And we'll just do one at a time. Cleaning the tip. Let's see, on all of these, I'm gonna use just the Silva Bright 100 because I plan on patina, putting patina on them. But on this one, I may not. So I may use the Silver Gleam on that. And as you guys are familiar, at this point, oh, I didn't turn the heat up, duh. I work at about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 365 or so Celsius. And I just drop like four beads on and then do it. I don't put some on and drag it. I don't know, it's just easier for me that way. And I don't worry about smoothing it out or anything at this point. I'm just getting it on because I'll be adding embellishment and all kinds of design features. And why bother with spending time doing that just now? And these sometimes can be hard to hold with pliers. I always um, use my washcloth or whatever to help hold things down. Just keeps it from sliding around so much. But sometimes I'll directly hold it with the washcloth and not even use the pliers. It just depends. Again, just a usually a drop in each, you know, each side, north, south, east, and west. Then if you tap, it applies very easily. So I'll continue and get these done. And like I say, I'm gonna probably use the silver gleam on that skull site, since I may leave that silver. Or what I'm thinking is I may do that one a copper patina, which in my personal experience, I have found it works best with silver gleam than the other um, soft solder. Okay, I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna use this 18 gauge pre-tin copper wire. Got it on Amazon, but it's manufactured by Copper Wire USA. And I'm gonna measure, not to an exact science, but just approximately how much wire leaving a tail I'll need to go around this stone. So again, just approximately. And that's kind of what I did uh, on this one except I used a 20 gauge because it's a much smaller stone. And it just um, gives it a little sharper edge here. And then when I noticed it, it made it easier to drop these beads on it. Like it, they didn't have the tendency to roll down the side like normal without an edge. So that's what I'm trying again, but with a, a bigger gauge wire. And the way we'll start that, 
we'll figure out what we want for the top and the bottom. I think I'll put this at the top since there seems to be a little bit uh, wider edge from the copper foil and we might need it for this. So I usually start at the bottom down here and just get it attached. And then I can work around. I'm just going to hold it down, apply a little bit of flux. And just apply a little bit of copper, I mean solder. And you can see that attaches it nicely. So I'll do that and go all the way around and come back when I'm up at the top. Okay, I've gone all the way around the edges and up to the top here. Again, you don't have to get, you know, crazy as far as perfection, because we're not to that point yet. But you can see it laid pretty nice and it just gives it a little different kind of edge. This I'm gonna turn into like the stalk and also it'll be part of the bale, which is what I did on this one too. I just, um, you know, forget this jump ring, but I just made this part of the bale and did a circle to be able to attach it because you'll see the stalk is pretty much hidden anyway from the decorations. So, and this is just whatever you want to do. I try to keep it kind of centered. So it may lay something like that. Let's see. That's about center, so that's pretty close. this off or just attach it to kind of something like that and then the jump ring can attach here. Right? You follow? I'll cut that tip off ever so slightly. good enough for me because again like I said that'll pretty much be hidden so a little bit of flux clean my tip grab a little bit of solder and attach it And that's your basic pumpkin design. And now it's just all decorative. You could kind of keep it simple. And I had selected a bunch of um, different things. This time I think instead of chips, I may get some little beads out, but it could get real simple and just put a leaf on it. I can show you. The stone's still pretty hot, so that's why I'm not just picking it up. 
but I could easily just do a leaf, right? That might be cute in its simplicity and maybe some of those tendrils. I don't know, I kind of like that. Or this kind of leaf with some tendrils. I like that because it's kind of got the copper. Hey, that might be cute. I like that. So, but there's all kinds of different leaves. Oh, I like that too. <laughs> That's what happened on the last one, is I liked both, both of the way these looked. And so I put this leaf and this leaf and a chip. But so I don't know. I just kind of play as I go. I like that because it's a bigger stone, right? So just something that simple with some tendrils and maybe some dots. Oh, I still got to do the, the lines. So let's do that before we get on to this. I'll show you how I do that. Um, let's see. Last time I used the 24 gauge bare copper wire. I did not tin it. That's why it remained copper but this could easily be tinned. Well, that was this part too. And I did tin it and add decorative dots. So I'll show you how I did that. So all I did was kind of guesstimate like how long I wanted these. Keep in mind, I can cut them shorter. So that's no big deal. So they'll be attached down here. So that looks good to me. So equal parts there. And then I'll need at least two, but maybe I'll even do three this time. So I'm gonna cut off three pieces of about this size. And they don't have to be exact because tendrils are different sizes, right? So we'll cut one a little shorter. Say about here and then what I did instead of trying to attach them one at a time I just bundled them and then took a plier and twisted so they'd stay together right and then the shorter piece I think should be first one to go up and again find kind of find the center Such as that. I don't want to be touching the stone. I'll let loose of that stone here in a minute. I have to find some way of holding this down. Something like that. And again, some people might be fanatical about getting this absolutely centered, but I am not. I don't want to get burned. So I'm mindful. of my fingers <laughs> more than the wire. As you see, it burned and it would do that to my finger. Okay, so there's that. Looks pretty centered to me. And wire will cool off way, way quicker than the stone. So I can touch the wire already. 
and I just want to shape it a little bit because they're kind of round, right? Or not round, but like that. And I'll hold that up there. Let's have them cross a little bit. Actually. Attach it right up here. So I'm going to press that down. I'm going to hold it with my plier. Oops, sorry. Because they're so thin, they might come off if you're not if you don't let that cool before you move on something like that and then I'm going to do the same thing with these and attach them up there and then these will just get like a spiral and get them we'll tin them all so let me go ahead and attach these other sides off camera so I can do it quicker Okay, I got them all attached, and I tinned them. I have not tinned the, the tops of them yet because I want to make sure I can fit whatever beads or charms I'm putting on there because once you tin them, they can get, you know, thicker. So I need to evaluate the actual design first before I decide on tinning those. And we can always leave them copper like we did in the other one so I'll see but let me play with the design okay so I decided to go ahead and tin the um, what are gonna be those little Kindle trendles whatever they're called the little vines I tried one to see I tinned it briefly and messed with it to see how manipulative it was, malleable it was, and it's okay. So I went ahead and pre-tinned that so that I can now add, I think I'm just gonna go with that little leaf. If I can find it, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. I think I'm just gonna put this leaf right on here. and then just have those come down and then I'll do some decorative beads on it. What do you guys think? I don't think it needs anything more than that, personally speaking. But we can always add to it, can't we? Okay, make sure my tip of my iron is clean because I'm going to drop a fairly decent size ball right on where that bale is and allow it to melt. And hopefully it melted through, but we'll see. Seems like it did, but I'm going to go ahead and hold it now. And eat it. Okay. So that's on. Let's go ahead and add a tad right up here. Okay. Now I think I'll go ahead and do some decorative beads on these 
um, these pieces here before I move on and then I'm gonna just clean up the edges and whatnot. So again, we're gonna have lots of flux. And th these kind of designs are, are nice because they're giving me plenty of practice with the little decorative beads. So I like that. And um, I'm not one that I get, you know, carried away with their consistency or whatnot. I also want some around the edges. Should I zoom in for you guys or is that close enough? I think that's close enough. And if in doubt, add more flux. Can never really have too much flux. <laughs> so you see what I'm doing, right? I'm gonna continue. And I'm on my third one. I did this one. I'm not gonna show you the details yet. But I'm getting so proficient at doing this now that I'm learning little tricks. Whereas with this one, I ended up having to attach each one of these, or maybe two if I got lucky, at a time up at the top. Now I've figured out how I can do all four. Now these had six, but I decided, because this is a smaller stone, just to go with the four grooves and because I'm practicing, 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 I can now do all four at the same time instead of individually. And that's just the nature of practice, right? It's not rocket scientists, it's not a mystery, it's just practice, which is what I, I love and why I guess I do multiples at a time instead of one, and then I may not make these again till, well, more than likely, I won't make these again till next year. And by then I will have probably forgotten all the little tips. <laughs> you follow me? I mean, that is kind of how it goes. But I thought I would share that with you. And that's why practice is a beautiful thing. Okay guys, I am back. And I just wanna point out, I don't know if you've noticed, but just in this filming, <laughs> I've lost two nails. <laughs> and just threw some polish on them. And so, it's evident that even with gloves, those glue-on nails just aren't really meant for working. It's fine if you have a wedding or something to go to, but not for me. I'm just gonna have to deal with lots of polish to try and help my nails as best I can. Anyway, I'm back with the final, final. After I put a polish on, each of the pieces, here they are. This is the original that you guys helped me so much with, and I love it. And this was the one I did, um, started out today. It's a sunstone. And what I did was I used some rubber stamping on the back to give it a little bit of interest instead of just a plain plain back and this is fun and i've done other videos at least one other where i demonstrated this 
But if you'd like to see just a short video just on this technique, let me know in the comments. But it's pretty cool. And I like that. Kept it simple with just some tendrils or whatever they're called, vines with a leaf charm. And then the second one today, or the third one I did was of this beautiful Labradorite. And basically, again, the same thing, just with different uh, leaves. Kept it simple, didn't put any chips or beads or anything on it. This one I just did a, a light kind of uh, stripedy technique. It's, it's nothing fancy, just to give it a little interest. Again, when we're doing the patina. And if you notice, these three have the patina. And I, I mean, I like it, it's growing on me and I think it's appropriate with certain um, designs. But the last one I did, I thought, I just wanna see what it looks like silver. And I'm partial. <laughs> I love shiny silver. Yeah. So this is my favorite, the shiny. And I kind of wish I had left it because uh, somebody in one of the other comments of the Help Wanted video suggested that I take a picture of this one uh, before the patina and then compare them both that they felt like it was possible to remove the patina, but it really isn't. Um, in sterling silver, you can buy sanding the piece a lot. It's a lot of extra work, so it's not an easy fix. In soft solder, you kind of have to re-solder the whole thing or well, even when you sand it down, you're still gonna have a darker uh, color and you won't ever get back to this unless you totally re-solder. You can see it turns it a pewter and it's sanding as you might, you'll never get it back to the original shiny silver. So no, you can't do that. I'd have to take everything off and re-solder it. So that's why I left this one. Um, just silver. So give me your thoughts and opinions. Do you like the patina? Do you like it better than it being silver? I think it, in this particular case, in my opinion, you lose some detail. I don't know, that's just me. Like, I don't think you can really see the little tendrils as nicely as you can with just the silver, but that's just me and I'm impartial, or partial, yeah. I'm partial to shiny silver, but I like them all. I ran out of ideas <laughs> um, for the skull site that I did the scalloped edge. I might save that for another day. Oh, but that's good, I pulled it out because I have to wash the flux off. But so here's the final products, guys. Let me know your opinions, what you think. Um, I like them all, honestly. But again, as I said, my preference is the bright silver. What's yours? And until next time, bye. I don't know what I'm gonna do next, actually, but I'll let you know. Till next time, bye.